Hey guys, Scott here. Uh, I've been kind of sick the past couple of days, more so than usual anyway. And so I've not been streaming or making videos. So um, the other day I did a 1v1 cow shed just short stream because I figured that's good for short form content. And today I wanted to just go over the best time that someone had and just analyze their gameplay just to show really how a good survivor hit, handles like a bunch of tiles and stuff like that. And uh, I think it'd just be a good learning resource. Important thing to know about 1v1s is it is... It's mostly a meme. It's very RNG dependent. Some people just got two TL walls and a dead zone. Some people got three connected jungle gyms. Like, it's just really, really luck dependent. Um, but this person was clearly extremely good. Um, I don't know who they are. They didn't say anything in chat. Um, I'm willing to bet they're a comp player, just by the way that they're playing. We had a lot of comp players uh, play yesterday, um, but they didn't say that they were. I I'm assuming they are based on their play style. But um, that being said, I just wanted to go over it. It might be a good learning resource. That's enough of this fucking disgusting face. Okay, uh, so let us start with the shack. I don't really know where shack 1v1s are supposed to start. I just started it here because, I don't know, that's just what I did with everyone else. So uh, here is running shack against a very good survivor. Now, something you can try here is that little maneuver where you act like you're going towards the door and then you quickly vault the window. It does make it so you have uh, less distance between you and the survivor. However, it ends up not mattering too much because it'll still give a good survivor this spot right here. And this is the crucial element of Shaq for survivor. You pretty much wait right here and you slowly walk towards the window. You don't necessarily run. Um, you just walk towards the window just so you have some momentum going. So you can take the fast fault if the killer tries to hit you. Or if the killer doubles back early, you can go towards the pallet instead. So this is the optimal safe play for survivor. And the correct play is killer against a good survivor that's playing perfectly is to butt your head in a little bit to force them to get the fast vault and then you double back now running shack from this side is far less safe for the survivor because they have to make a, a window vault here that's much closer to you so it's a lot more dangerous so this is a good scenario to be in for killer and in most scenarios this would just yield you a hit however she actually got a tile i don't know if it's a he or she by the way i'm just saying nia in general um got a pallet right outside shack which unfortunately is very bad luck for me so this is an element where yeah luck can come into play however i'm willing to bet she saw this pallet beforehand and so instead of running past the shack pallet and not dropping it if this pallet wasn't here i'm willing to bet she would have just dropped it instead so we'd still be in basically the same scenario except at least shack pallet would be gone which would be way better for me but that rng made that a bit uh not good um, so now the Shack Pallet is still up and she knows that which can come into use later, which is obviously going to be a pain in the ass because Shack against a good player takes about 20 seconds to get rid of, assuming no connected tiles. Uh, dropping the Pallet here was the correct play because I was just simply too close to her for her to get another loop around it. She could have played the unsafe side, but that's again unsafe if you're going to play in like a comp play style, you make all of these safe plays. Now this play is really interesting. When you're going around uh, this tile from this side, What's the usual pathing you would expect? Well, you're going to go here. What I would do is go here and then run to the pallet and then check spot stand right here. If the killer's at the pallet, I can see, oh, is the killer going to keep chasing? Uh, if so, I'll vault here. If the killer doesn't keep chasing and doubles back, I might leave the tile or go somewhere else. This spot becomes very safe. But what this player did was extremely interesting. They didn't go for the pallet. They actually turned and angled themselves right here and started running for the fast vault on this window which is a really interesting play. And you can notice that I reacted super late to it. I walked so far forward after seeing the play that they're making that they actually get enough distance with this vault. Now, if I turned quicker, I would have been able to see this double back and probably get a hit before they were able to get to the pallet. But because this was such an unexpected play, I just fumbled and they were able to get another loop out of it. So doing the unexpected thing is actually really smart sometimes. Here, I try to moonwalk to make it seem like I'm doubling back. Uh, she just simply does not fall for it whatsoever. Goddamn stretch res. Um, that's a joke, by the way. And here she has to drop the pallet. She waited at the pallet a little bit just to try to bait a stun to get a bit more distance. But I know at that distance, there's no possible way she's not going to drop the pallet because she can't get to the window quick enough. Um, so that's not going to work. Here she pre-drops this pallet. And I need to make an example here of why people that have lower skill levels in this game just think all oh, comp dbd is just pre-drop pallet and a run we all make fun of comp dbd because i still think it's stupid but individually the whole point is to make the safest plays possible when you're dealing with certain pallets this tile has a very high wall which means the possibility of me getting a success eh, successful mind game on it 
is greater than the value of the pallet itself, which means you would just drop the pallet. And now we're in a scenario where I'm just going to have to, I, I can't really play any type of moonwalking thing or anything like that. Not that it's probably going to work, but it just minimizes the chance of that actually happening whatsoever. And so that's why there are certain pallets that are pre-dropped and certain pallets that are not pre-dropped. For example, the jungle gym right before that was not pre-dropped because there were things and there, there are safe check spots on that tile. Um, but the most recent one does not have as safe tiles or uh, check spots rather. So now we're back to Shaq. We're in the same scenario. We do the same play. And again, even though we, this is basically a flow chart. We're both playing the flow chart correctly here now. Now I'm uh, too close and that pallet is not there anymore. So now she does drop that pallet. Basically, if this pallet wasn't here, that's what would have happened the first time. And that would have made this a lot easier because I wouldn't have had to deal with going back to Shaq again. So now we're back to this tile again. Um, and you'll notice that uh, there's not really any correct play here other than to just get away from the tile. And unfortunately, there was another chain tile right next to this one too. This one's not mind gameable whatsoever. So you just have to brute force it against good players on short tiles a lot of them are just not mind gameable and you just have to brute force it and it's another interesting point to think about too a lot of people hate tiles like that um but you have to think about how long is she actually looping me at that tile it's maybe what eight seconds it doesn't actually take that wrong and a huge part of killer is getting rid of resources so those are not possible you know a few minutes from now and that's why certain tiles being super safe are okay, because usually they just don't last very long. They last like eight seconds. They're not a very big deal, but you need to get rid of those resources. So the next time you chase someone there, it is going to be a, a lot less safe for them. And you're probably going to get a hit. So now we're back at Shaq in the corner. Now, normally this should be a hit for me, assuming that there's no uh, tiles around here, but I don't actually think I still get a hit here. Because she actually maintains her distance perfectly, yeah. She gets a medium vault there because I, I double back late. Vaulting back there was also the correct call. Um, but now we're entity blocked. I mean, at this point, I have Bloodlust 2, which is just sad. You should not get Bloodlust 2 against basically anybody. But, um... So after 2 minutes and 30 seconds, I finally get my first hit. But that took uh, an embarrassingly long amount of time. Now, we haven't even started this side of the map yet. That was 243 just using, you know, 4 or 5 pallets on the left side of the map. This needs to be pre-dropped because if you try to play it, then this side is extremely unsafe. But if you pre-drop it and run all the way around the barn, it becomes much safer. So you have to pre-drop that one. That is the only correct play with that kind of pallet. So that was right. Um, and then going around back here to the left. I think she goes to the window again. I actually don't remember. <clears throat> now, I tried cutting her off because I assumed the window would be going. But as soon as I changed direction there, she decided to not go for the window. So reacting to what I'm doing perfectly and adjusting perfectly... This is also a very, very important play that a lot of very good survivors make. So this is a crucial moment in this uh, tile as well. So when I go here, what I'm expecting is she's check spotting this corner right here. So I want to put my red light kind of like right here just to make her rotate around, you know, kind of this way. Um, but what uh, good survivors will do is they will get out of line of sight. So I think they're th that's what they're doing. And it'll make me hesitate here a little bit. But actually, she just goes for the fast vault instead. She was just getting out of line of sight to like maintain momentum for a fast vault, which puts her in this uh, scenario here again, which I wouldn't say this is a 50-50. It's pretty safe for the survivor unless they try to go for the window again. Um, if they try to go for the window again, again, perfectly predicted because last time I uh, did not double back. This time I did. And she guessed that perfectly, which I was super impressed by. And then safe pallet drop again. So very, very well predicted. It, it, that that window there is, I feel like it's like a 60-40. Um, the survivor has, I think, a bit more control over it, but it is basically an educated guess, and both times she just read me correctly. Um, I would say that was, you know, an educated decision based on how I played it last time. She figured I would try to switch it up, uh, and that was true. So here, I really thought I was finally going to have her, but, I mean, just perfectly medium vaulting back. This gives her distance into another connected tile, I think. Now, see, there I think I could have played that better because I should have remembered that this pallet was here and knowing the only possible way she could have gone was back through the window this direction. If she went outside the window, I probably could have cut her off before she got to this pallet and it probably would have ended the chase there. So that is, I think, my big mistake in that window. Um, I'm pretty sure. Now I just want to analyze that for my own sake. 
<clears throat> Let's see here. So she's looking at me. Fast fall. Nice. Beating wall back. I wonder if I could have just hit that. Yeah. Okay, so here, I think if I lunged around that, I it within this distance, yes, I could have hit that. So I should I should have known that she would medium ball back because that other pallet here was her only safe option. There's, there's nothing over here. So I, I should have known that. And I should have used that information to kind of blindly swing around here. It would still be a kind of guess, though, because she might have just ran anyway. And then I would have missed the lunge. So that's hard to say. There are things I could have done differently there to down her. Um, if I just lunged around that, I, I almost definitely could have hit her before she got to this pallet. So that was... Uh, Probably something I could have done about that one there. And now we're uh, yet again back to this tile, just utilizing this resource. This, I think, was the most impressive play of the entire uh, the entire thing right here. So this... Right here. This was... Uh, this is insane. So she goes here, and she is kind of looking behind her. You can notice the direction a uh, survivor is looking uh, by where their head is facing, but... It's, it's like they're kind of barely looking behind them. So usually if I see someone walking slowly up to a window, it means they're just waiting for you to get close enough to make sure that they need to fast vault it. So I move forward a tiny, tiny bit just to make her really, 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 really want to vault that window. And I figured, okay, at this point, there's, there's nothing over here. So she has to vault the window. The pallet's gone. We have to make this play. And then she doesn't vault it. She still faked that window, which was super, super good. So that was, uh, I think if I really look perfectly here, <clears throat> I should have noticed right here, right there. Notice she's not actually moving towards the window really anymore. At this point, she, I don't even think she can fast vault that. I don't think she has enough momentum or distance to fast vault that. So if I'm looking at this, this is a mistake on my end and a very good play on their end. At this point, they could not have fast vaulted that anymore, which means if they medium vaulted, I would have hit them here. And I should have known that. And yet I still fell for it because it was so convincing and I got screwed by it. So that got her significantly more distance there than I really needed to give her. And uh, I think she actually fast vaulted that window from that direction too, did she? Yeah, that's a fast vault. Her feet are out there. So she actually... That's pretty insane, too. She fast vaulted this window, which means she ran out here a little bit and then angled it back to run into the fast vault again. Um, that That's a awkward angle to do, but fast vault there is the correct call. Um, at this point, I mean, I'm just getting juiced to high hell, but there's basically no more resources here, so she burns her last enemy blocker, and now she doesn't have anything else. So eventually goes down, but uh, extremely, extremely, extremely well played. I thought it'd be interesting to go over that. Uh, 416 was the winning time of the day, almost completely clearing Ollie. So, uh, that was very impressive. Uh, Nuffig, whoever you are, extremely well played. Thank you for the, uh, example of what a good survivor does in a 1v1. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you next time.